Hi everyone, welcome back to another interview series. My name is Meher from Newfoundland and Labrador. And today I have the privilege to interview one of my close friends, Johan Mahda. Hi Johan, how are you doing? Fantastic, Meher. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Excited to be here today. Yes, thank you for being here, Johan. So Johan is an organizational psychologist and certified change management called Suntelt with experience in human, rela- human resources, talent management, change management, business transformation, leadership development, and career coaching. Johan currently works at Deloitte Canada and has previously worked for Walmart, Accenture, Royal Bank of Canada RBC, and the University of Toronto. Johan is known for hiring, engaging, and developing and retaining top talent to maximize workplace productivity and performance. As a career coach, Johan helps professionals gain career clarity, stand out as top talent, accelerate their job search success, ask interviews, and land their dream job faster. In the past three years, Johan has helped 300 plus professional landing an amazing jobs at top global companies, including Amazon, Deloitte, EY, Loblo, Merot, PwC, RBC, TD Bank, Walmart, and many more. When he's not working, Johan can be found volunteering his time to support new immigrants settled into Canada, empowering young professionals to fulfill their dream careers, coaching leaders and goofing around with his two daughters, six and nine-year-old young and one-year-old son. So how with your busy schedule and everything doing, thank you for being here. So my first question for you here, in terms of resumes, we've heard a lot of times, customize your resume so that it passes ATS and customize each job individually so that you have more chances because Once they pass ATS, a human being is reading that in six seconds and they will make a decision yes or no. So in your expertise, what can job seekers, new immigrants coming that they don't understand the ATS or they've been doing it, but there's no results. So what can they do? Yeah, that's a good first question, Meher. And I think before I answer the question, it's important for everyone to know the purpose of a resume. Mm -hmm. Um, So a resume is not a chronological list of all of your life history. Neither is it a brag sheet of every single accomplishment in your career. Mm -hmm. There's only one purpose of a resume, and that is to get you an interview for the specific role that you're going going after. And the key word here is specific role. All right. So I would encourage job seekers to think about a resume as a one to two page marketing document Mm -hmm. that includes your skills, your experiences, your accomplishments for a very specific role in a company. Mm -hmm. So that being said, your resume needs to be targeted to one target role. And that best aligns with your skills and your experiences. Now, you rightly said that, you know, recruiters um, are are very quick in terms of how they review um, and diagnose a resume when they look at it. So recruiters are are hiring for multiple roles. So they receive, you know, hundreds of resumes every single day. Mm -hmm. Uh, They look at a resume typically for six to 10 seconds. Yes. And this is where first impressions really, really matter. So in those six to 10 seconds, this is what I recommend. First and foremost, making sure your resume is ATS friendly too. So so it bypasses the ATS system and gets into the hands of a recruiter. Second, make sure it has a professional look and feel. Third, make sure it is relevant to the Mm -hmm. role you're going after. So it highlights the skills and experiences relevant to that role. And fourth is you want to make sure it showcases your results, your value, and your impact. So then the question you have to ask yourself is, you know, is my resume doing all of these things? Mm -hmm. And and, and this really becomes very important. So my five tips for a very powerful resume is number one, keep it short and succinct, right? So I recommend typically a one page format for people with less than five years of experience and then either a one to two page format for five to 10 years of experience and then over 10 years of experience, a two-page format. Yes. Second, you want to make sure it is specific. 
So replace all of the generic fluff words in there like results oriented, people oriented, team player, and include specific stories and examples of your achievements. Yes. Number three, it needs to be targeted. So have one target role in mind and create a resume for that target role. Mm -hmm. Number four, it needs to be tailored. So it needs to be customized to include the key words and key phrases directly from the job posting. And number five, it needs to showcase value and impact. So you need to use results, numbers, and metrics, mm -hmm. such as how many, how much, how often yes. did you make an impact in terms of cost and time? Yeah. So that's what makes for a powerful resume that is ATS friendly, as well as that makes a powerful impression with a recruiter or a hiring manager. When you said ATS friendly, does it mean you're using the specific keywords? If they'd say in the job description says organize or team player, shall we use them the same? Yeah, so when I say ATS friendly, so ATS stands for Applicant Tracking System. Mm -hmm. And it is a system that is used by majority of the big companies yes. in order for them to track all of the applications. So it's just a backend system. When people submit resumes, their resumes goes into this ATS system that then collects all of the resumes and passes it on to the recruiter. So few things to keep in mind in order to bypass this ATS system successfully. Number one, you want to keep the format as simple as possible. So what I recommend is a one column format as opposed to, you know, those fancy designs with multiple yes. columns. I would also avoid any text bo boxes, mm -hmm. any columns and, and any images. Uh, unless you're submitting your resume through email or through a direct message where it's not you know bypassing through an ATS system. All right. um, and then, of course, you you need to make sure that your resume is tailored to include the specific keywords. And when I say keywords, I'm looking for more so the hard skills, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So for example, for marketing, you're looking for things like search engine optimization, content marketing, marketing analytics, yeah. uh, marketing strategy, uh, CRM, like Salesforce, right? Those are the keywords that definitely need to be included in the various sections of your resume to make it bypass the ATS as well. And then there's a lot of softwares out there. I think job scan, you know, you upload your resume, you upload the job description, anything less than 80, it's not great, right? It has to be more than 80 so that you can submit, correct? Yeah, so there are, you're, you're right. There's a lot of softwares out there. So job scan is an example. There is Resi Match, there is Teal. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they basically compare your resume mm -hmm. to the job posting to see how much of a match it is with specific skills. Now, the problem with some of these softwares is they look at hard skills as well as soft skills. And they look for words which are like generic words. Mm -hmm. um, Typically, a, a real ATS system won't do that. A real ATS system will really only look for hard skills and keywords and themes, right? So they won't look for things like team player and results oriented. Those generic skills yeah. are not typically what ATS systems look for. So I would say when you're passing your resume through job scan, even if it's a 60%, 70% match, but you if you have all of those keywords and hard skills, you should feel confident in going ahead and applying for the room. Yeah. And one last thing, between the resume and what's on the LinkedIn experience part, we know and we said that resume is specific for one job, but LinkedIn is kind of your website. So everything is there. And we don't have to customize every time we customize a resume. It doesn't make sense. So in LinkedIn, they can put everything more than the last 10 years. And then, but making sure that I feel it has to be, again, accomplishment statement, not just bulletin points, right? Yeah. So that's a very, very good question. And one that I receive often is, Johan, should I just take my resume and transfer it over to my LinkedIn? Mm -hmm. And and that approach is not the right approach. Mm -hmm. So a resume is very specific to one target role. And on top of that, you are also customizing it to include the keywords. You're yes. right. We can keep changing our LinkedIn profile, like how you would change your resume. So your LinkedIn is more so all-encompassing. So this is, you know, a, a, a profile that showcases 
who you are, what you do, what's the value you have to offer. And then, of course, similar to your resume, you want to include um, your career stories. You want to include your accomplishments to help increase your credibility. Yeah. Because if a recruiter comes and looks at multiple LinkedIn profiles for a similar job, you want to show something in there that is different. Maybe it is, you know, specific projects that you worked on that were very complex or very high yeah. in value, or maybe yeah. the number of stakeholders you impacted, or maybe the cost you saved or the revenue you generated, right? Or maybe the yes. awards and the promotions you got. So whatever that is, LinkedIn is an opportunity to showcase that. And there are many ways in addition to just your accomplishments where you can write content on LinkedIn, where you can publish materials on LinkedIn that yes. further adds to your credibility and showcases your unique value. Thank you for that, Johan. Again, for the audience watching or listening for the first time, I'm going to ask Johan a couple of questions and I'm going to post them on a daily basis, kind of a journey with us. You can like, share, comment all the videos. So tune in next time for another great question with Johan.